Free Soccer Training YouTube channel. So. Good morning and welcome to the Shrewsbury Soccer Training Podcast. If you're new to the channel, welcome and thank you for your support. If you're returning, thank you for your continued support. It means the world to me. Thank you so much. Um, and today's topic is going to be kind of talking about COVID and its effect on sports from the beginning until now. So whenever we were first talking about COVID, um, it just started to affect, say, uh, high school soccer, and they started implementing restrictions and things. So what some of the things they implemented were, you know, players have to wear masks and, you know, you can't head the ball. You can't throw the ball in. Now you can't kick the ball in until the ref calls a whistle. So now it's pretty much a foul if you just kick the ball out. You know, and there's a lot of things that are causing the game of play to kill the intensity, to kill the idea of urgency and the need to keep a play going because sometimes it's tactical to have the ball kicked out. And, you know, they're taking away a lot of things. And there's some other things that have popped up that I've noticed. It's like you can play the ball short in the box. Now, I understand this is in the, you know, the professionals, but in my opinion, you've never had to do that. You could always play it short eight, outside the 18. And that has never been a problem. So now you can play short inside the box. And, you know, it just doesn't make any sense to me. And then there's some other rules where they're basically trying to accommodate players that aren't capable of playing long balls. And now for younger ages, it makes sense, right? So you have, you know, some players that are trying to learn how to pass the ball far, but they can't do it. So they just kick as far as they can downfield, which, you know, implementing the play the ball, you can play the ball short inside the 18 it makes sense because you're trying to teach the idea of building from the back which is very important um but in the professionals you should have the skill you should have the ability to play a good 20 yard strong pass that should not be a problem i don't understand why that is now a rule that you can play inside the 18 but you know where i live they don't do that like I talked to a couple people on the Division One um, club team, they're like, "Yeah, no, we don't do that. Why would we do that? That doesn't help anybody, but teach. You know, we'll accommodate the weaker players." Which I hate to be mean, but playing at Division One or the professional level, you shouldn't be making rules to accommodate to weaker players. The whole point is to watch players perform at the level at which we're paying to watch them play not to accommodate to lower levels. And in my opinion, it's just not logical. It just isn't. But that's my opinion. I'm entitled to it. You can have your opinion. That's perfectly fine. You can disagree with my opinion. That's your prerogative, and I don't argue with it. But I just think that we need to make sure that we don't lose our grasp on what the sport is. And I think COVID is starting to do that because, you know, there is a there's an art to heading the ball properly. There's an art to throwing the ball in properly and good distances and accuracy and being able to do long passes that can span further than five yards. Um, and, you know, it just doesn't teach players to be creative. It just teaches them just go down there and stay next to them. No one can defend you until you touch the ball. Which, why does that matter? Because now all he's going to do is punt the ball away if there's, you, know, you still have to play short outside the 18 anyways. I just don't get it, you know, and I've only, like, I play FIFA 21 on the Xbox, and I've noticed that some teams will do that on the Xbox, they'll play it short, but almost all the teams I choose to play with, none of which utilize the short pass inside the 18, none of them, I just don't see it, and I don't have any problems with the teams I've coached, or the teams that I watch, they don't have any problem connecting a good 20-yard pass, and it just is silly. But apparently it is what it is. Now, the other thing that's blowing my mind is I saw on a video on TikTok where some girl put her hands behind her back to jump in front of the ball that was going to be a shot outside the 18. Now, I got a lot of hate for this, but when you think about it, what are you going to do? You can't defend yourself. If that ball comes straight for your face and you've got your hands behind your back, what are you going to do? Just let that thing go full force into your face? Why would you do that? What logic does it make? You shouldn't be jumping in front of a shot anyways. It's just not logical. You should be trying to cut them off and go towards them, not jump in front of them. And apparently they're doing it in the professionals. I Once again, I've never seen it done in the professionals. I've had people tell me that 
you know, you must not be up on your culture and stuff. Like, no, I just don't teach really bad habits. Jumping in front of a ball and making yourself completely defenseless to protect yourself is illogical. I don't care if you're a boy or a girl. We're all the same. If that ball hits you blunt force with full power in the face by a strong-footed player, it's going to hurt and potentially break your nose. Or if you're a guy, you could definitely go for the, you know, the special areas. <laughs> you don't want to get hit there because it hurts a lot. And, you know, you don't get the ball back because you defensively jumped in front of the ball. It's play on, in my opinion. If you put yourself in a position where you get injured, then why should we stop the game of play unless it's like a life-threatening or a serious injury? I just don't understand it. I don't. I just don't get it. And of course, with these younger ages on TikTok who like to bash down coaches who have their own opinions, it's kind of sad to see why they've implemented these rules. I see it. There's way too many snowflakes that are getting offended by other people's opinions because they're contrary to what they believe. And it's kind of sad. I, ex I respect it. If you feel like jumping in front of the ball, putting your hands behind your back and hoping for the best, well, that's more power to you. I'm glad that you're confident that you aren't going to get hit. But in the event that you do get hit, and you get hit hard, I pretty much guarantee they'll be the last time you put your hands behind your back to try to deflect a ball. It just doesn't make sense to me. Because even if it hits your elbow, it's a handball. From pretty much the elbow to the hand. Or actually, it's usually the, the shoulder to the tip of your fingers. If it hits any part of that and changes direction, it's a handball. You can't, like, remove your arms from your body to avoid it. We're not robots. But I don't know. Some of these rules are just driving me nuts lately. And I understand that some of them are required. But, like, the COVID rules, some of them have just really just killed the game in the United States. As if it was already having trouble you know, being respected among its peers anyways, you know, with football, basketball, and baseball overshadowing soccer, it's already difficult. And, you know, with the high school games, you know, I understand that they, some of them don't draw a lot of crowds, but whenever you make it a one-to-one -one ratio where you have one parent for every child on the field, you know, not a lot of people are showing up. And that also takes away from the idea that college scouts can't really come see it. So parents, this really puts a lot of pressure on you to film you got to film your kids playing and it's just hard, right? Cause you want to watch them play. You don't want to film them. You want to be able to see it happening. But if you want your kids to have any kind of connection with the scouts or with the coaches or with colleges, professionals, whatever, you got to start filming. If you're not filming, you're not going to be getting the full experience because the coaches that are trying to recruit them can't come watch them. In a lot of times, not every game is going to be televised. I know some teams and some schools have done a great, great service by live streaming it. But, you know, that also comes down to how well does that camera operator operate. And I've seen some that are just, I got motion sickness. I'm surprised I didn't like throw up trying to watch the game, how much that camera was whipping around on the field. It was excruciating my uh, I it's just awful and it was funny because I saw that happening and then the next day I saw you know camera operator needed hundred dollars per game I'm like oh my god they must have really upped it from free to hundred because there's no way that guy that was just whipping around the field was getting paid a hundred dollars to do that jeez you know and it just blows my mind you know I I just can't wait for this vaccine to come out and let sports go back to normal I just I think it's really destroying sports and more so in the United States because I've noticed in some countries where they're already on path to having no problems with COVID and basically getting back to normal. In the United States, we're just reporting increased numbers, vaccines are causing anaphylactic shock and seizures and it's just like, oh my God, what are we doing? I don't want to be a guinea pig, but I want soccer and sports to go back to normal. You know, it's just, it just drives me nuts. But, you know, I, I'm hoping, I am hoping that we can get back to where we were because I just don't see fans putting up with these restrictions more than a year and a half, two years tops. And if they continue, people are just going to really get frustrated. And, 
you know, they're already getting a little irritated because you can't tailgate, can't have parties, you can't, you know, enjoy the sports the fullest potential. We're dealing with it because right now it's still kind of new and we're understanding the risk and, you know, dangers associated. But, you know, people are saying, well, you're probably eventually going to get COVID. Well, if that's the case, then eventually people are just going to be like, well, we're just going to have tailgates anyways. Might as well. It's going to be like those chicken pox parties. Well, you're going to get chicken pox. Might as well get it now. Get immune to it. Yeah, it just drives me nuts. Oh, yeah, it's just one of those things. But, you know, I am, I'm also getting questions from people. What can I do to train at home? You know, what can I do? And the problem is with soccer is that it is a team sport. You can do a lot of individual dribbling through cones. You can do shooting drills. Um, you can do a lot of individual touches on the ball, a lot of conditioning and weightlifting and running and endurance and hit, all these things. But at the end of the day, you still need to practice one-on-ones. You still need to work as a team. You still need to have that pressure of someone who's trying to take the ball from you. And... You know, right now at the games, they're very um, COVID restricted, which means you can't really be aggressive on the ball. Now, with football, you can still play normal. That's, of course, you have to. But with soccer, you still need to be able to tackle. You still need to put some pressure on the pressure on the ball. But you can't even do that. Like, if you go and you challenge too hard, or if you slide tackle, or if you, you know, body someone off the ball, it's a foul. Like, how are we supposed to compete when all these other countries are playing the game? Like, there's a game where a German team tried to play with COVID restrictions and just got absolutely massacred. Like, 36 to nil. I mean, guys, that's bad. That's literally scoring from the kickoff and going hard the entire game and scoring almost every single minute of the game. I mean, well, of course, not every minute because it's a 90-minute game, but still, at the same time, that's a lot of goals. 36 to nothing is a shutout like tenfold. Because typically games go between one to three, sometimes five, in my opinion, is a bad game. But to get completely obliterated 30 something to nothing is just typically unheard of. And it's just not fair, right? It just isn't. And I understand what COVID could potentially do is make teams really focus on the passing game and execution to space instead of man on aggression. But what are we supposed to do? And with the masks, you know, they need, you have to be able to breathe to play sports. Like it's a kind of an important aspect to the game, right? You got to breathe because if you don't breathe, it's kind of hard to run and sprint and do things that you actually need to do, like think. <laughs> oxygen is not going to the brain you're not thinking as clearly as you would but you know we'll we'll see i i actually hope with this new vaccine they'll they'll fix all the little quirks to it and they'll roll it out and we'll finally get to go back to sports but I tell you guys some of these uh some of these rules that are rolling in are just kind of questionable like i said the short 18 Short inside the 18 from the goal kick, jumping with your hands behind your back. Um, no one's allowed to do headers. You can't throw the ball in. I mean, these are some things I think need to be reverted because especially the short pass in the 18, because we're teaching that, you know, oh, well, if you can't make a long, well, we'll make them easier because basically now you get a guy who can stand in the box and, you know, it's just doesn't make any sense. I, I don't get it, but, you know, I can, I can agree with that but I don't agree with making yourself defenseless and jumping with your hands behind your back. Um, anyways, that is my kind of Sunday morning uh, podcast talk. Uh, it's very simple, kind of focused on some of the new things in soccer as well as COVID restrictions and my hopes and dreams of going back to what we used to have. Now I am doing a giveaway. So if you're not um, up to date on the giveaway, so in order to be entered into the giveaway to win the Adidas GMR kit, you need to be one of the first 10 subscribers to my Twitch channel. Now you can go find my Twitch channel by going to twitch.tv slash coach underscore RY four N that is the number four RY number four N. And once you subscribe, you'll be put on the list to of possible um, contestants who could win. And we will do a drawing the day of, or the day after I reach 10, depending on what time that happens. Um, and as long as you're a subscriber, you will always be entered automatically into any and every drawing. The only way that you cannot be entered into a drawing is if you won the previous drawing. Basically, you can't win two drawings back to back. 
That would be bad. That's not fair, and I'm not going to do that to people. So anyways, thank you so much for listening to my podcast. If you have any questions, concerns, or comments, or if you'd like to be on the podcast, feel free to send me a email at shrewsburysoccer1 at gmail.com. That is the number one, shrewsburysoccer1 number one, at gmail.com. Or you can message me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, wherever you can find me. I will try to provide all the links down below. Also, this video will be linked to YouTube. So if you are on YouTube or if you'd like to download it because you have premium YouTube because you're special, <laughs> you can go to uh, YouTube at youtube.com slash Shrewsbury Soccer Training. Thank you so much for listening and I hope to uh, have another episode up tomorrow. Have a good one and stay safe out there, guys.